Welcome to Storytime with Sergey. That's what I'm going to call it. So back, I'm going to take you way back to 2019. So back in 2019, I was updating these NFL and page promo pieces for Fox Sports. And these things look like this. So essentially, you'll have something like that. So you would say like, today, 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 and then today, and then you'll see like the schedule for the day. Like what's coming up, what time, and things of that nature. Well, you had to create these like a lot every single week and you probably had to create like anywhere from 20 to 40 or something like that. I remember it was a big amount. And remember, this was 2019. Mogert's, I mean, Mogert's were already here, but remember most networks and companies, big companies don't update right away. So if let's say it's 2019, it's not uncommon for them to be using something that's like one or two versions behind and in some cases even three. So 2019, they're, they're, at the time, they're probably using After Effects 2017 and Premiere 2017. And because of that, you can't really utilize some of the tools like Mogert's. And you might be wondering, like, why do they do that? Well, because it takes a long time to update uh, everyone. And not only that, but with like some plugins and scripts and stuff like that, I mean, it messes a lot of things up. So they usually wait a couple of years for everyone to catch up to update their tools and their plugins. And so that's what a lot of people do. So even though it's like 2021, we have image replace feature, but a lot of places can't use it until a year or two from now. So just something something to uh, to think about for sure. So I had this thing to create, this thing to update, and let me show you how painful it was. Now, I already cleaned this up. I already know where things are, and I already rigged things up to where it's responsive. But before, it wasn't like that. It was pretty raw, pretty... I don't know, pretty messy. So if you've never worked on it before, you had to open this up, you had to know where things were. So if just to update today, you had to find a composition, like where is it? I think it's this one. And then you're like, all right, well then I think it's that one. And no, not that one. And you kind of had to like spend a whole day just looking for this stuff. So today, yeah, it's this one. So you would click on it, you would update it in here, and then you would have to go back and go to the compositions here and update them in here for every single composition. And that's just today, right? Then you had to update the time on both here and here. In some cases, you had to get rid of this logo. In some cases, you didn't. You had to update every single lineup here, which was a pain. I mean, you had to type it in by hand, and sometimes you would misspell things because you were too fast. And so you had to set things up. You had to move things around. You had to find this logo, replace it for a different one. And Anyway, I'm just trying to paint you like a very painful picture. And keep in mind, it's something you do constantly and you're getting emotionally and physically tired of this and you're just done with it. So it's not uncommon to spend the entire day setting these up, ju just to set them up, right? So if you had to do like 20 or 30 of them, I mean, you constantly have to do this, look at your sheet and make sure you're spelling everything right, make sure it's the right lineup. And even after you set it up, right, then, like you would queue it up, you would render it overnight, come back the next day, and then maybe some renders gave out on you. Maybe you made some errors and you had to redo some stuff. Anyway, yeah, it can it can mess you up. It can take a long time. So naturally, I would go like, hey, let's let's do a Mogurt. And uh, that's what I would do today. Like, in fact, I already created a Mogurt. Let me show you. So I would just drag it in like this. Boom, now it's a Mogurt. And I can easily update these on the fly. I can just hand this off to an editor and not even bother updating it. I'm like, hey, here's a template. You add whatever you want to it, I'm done. So that's what I would do today, right? And let me show you what this Mogur does now, actually. So we have the position X and Y. You can kind of adjust things if you want. Now, it's already responsive. It will adjust itself automatically, but you can adjust this on the fly if you want. So that option is definitely there. Then you would go and choose like a network. Do you want it to be NFL and Fox or do you want it to be like online? Like maybe it's only going to be available on online or something like that. So you can quickly pick between these two. Now, then the next Sunday, instead of that, maybe you want to say today. So you can just type today. Look how easy it is. Just change it and it changes it here. It changes it in here as well. So let me preview this. Yeah, I mean, it's so easy. Uh, I mean, no more clicking through compositions and getting lost. Yeah, no more of that. So then you would update the time. You're like, all right, maybe it's at 7.30. So you type 7.30. And if I click away, you can see it updates it. Maybe it's uh, somewhere else, maybe like it's an Atlantic standard time, it would do that. I mean, you can pick any kind of time zone you can think of and it will automatically adjust it, which is awesome. And again, this way it avoids like, you, sometimes you can't remember like, what's, how do you 
what kind of time time zone it is. Is it three letters, two letters? So you can easily just pick one and there you go. Then changing the teams. Let me show you how easy that is. So you go in here and you have the lineup. So one, two, three, you can see that based on here and you have the lineup. So let's say maybe instead of, I think it's five right now, maybe you want to have three teams. So you don't have to like deleting stuff and moving things around. Now you just say, hey, this one, none, none, and then boom, it adjusts itself. Then again, you say none for that as well. And so now you have three, You're like awesome. Then you can say, you can easily pick any kind of teams you want. You don't have to type it in. You don't have to misspell things. I mean, it's already decided for you. You can update any kind of team. You can even scroll on them, do it quickly. And if you need to add like a fourth lineup, you can just quickly go over here and set it to any team you want. And it will automatically adjust everything, super handy. Then you would move on to the next one. You're like, all right, I got that done. So we have the America's Game of the Week. Maybe you don't want that option. Sometimes they don't have that for that week. So then you can just turn it off. The logo goes away, the lineup goes away and you're done, right? Now you can turn it on at any time. You can adjust the time. Maybe you can say 8.30. And then whatever you type in here, boom, 8.30. And uh, you can also adjust the time zone and Again, very handy. It's way more enjoyable. Uh, you can go over here and adjust the lineups. Let's go over here. You can say maybe America's Game of the Week. You can just pick between any team you want. It will adjust it. You can kind of scroll on the mouse. Anyway, you can do all kinds of stuff. Maybe you want to have two games in here. So you can, again, do the same thing, turn it off, set it to none to, for both. And there you go. Everything's adjusted. Everything is perfect. Yeah, if it was only that easy. But at the time, remember, it was 2019, we're two versions behind. I had to do something different. So I try to do this. Let me show you this now. So we're gonna go back to After Effects and no, actually let's go to Excel. So in the Excel, I created an Excel sheet and it's the same concept as what I showed you in the MoGrid. So each line of text actually represents a specific render, like each project, right? So the first here column represents whether or not you wanna render it. So you, if you say ready, then it's going to render whatever changes you make in here. Now, if you don't want it to ren render, you just say done, and then it's going to ignore it. Okay, so I'm going to say ready. Then what would be the name of my video file? Then you can call it whatever. I'm going to call it week one. That's fine. Then remember that text, you would say something like tonight, maybe instead of today. You can choose a different logo. You can adjust the time. You name it. You can adjust all of these lineups, but you have to do it in here. So you can go over here, adjust all the lineups. If you set it to none, it's gonna ignore it. You get the idea. So it's the same thing what we were doing in the MoGrid, but just in one line in a spreadsheet. Now, why is this helpful? Well, keep in mind, what if you had 20 of these? So you would just copy this and just paste them like that, right? All day long. You can quickly create like 10 of them on the fly, like on the fly. And based on how many you have, how many lines of text you have, that's how many renders it's going to queue it up. So let's let's not do this many. Let's only do like three. I'm going to delete these. So let's delete. All right. So we have three things. So maybe the second video, I'm going to call it week two and then week three, right? Instead of tonight, I'm going to change it just so you know that it's working. I'm going to say uh, tomorrow and then this one's going to be today. All right, and then like maybe change different apps, maybe NFL for two. And let's just say nine o'clock for these. Let's do nine, nine. Not sure why it's setting. I think you have to actually say nine o'clock. Let's do that. And there you go. I'm gonna copy this, paste it. All right, you get the idea. So you can easily do this. And so now all you need to do, just make all the changes. Let's do just the first one right here for today. I'm gonna do, let's do Chiefs versus Bills. All right, so you make all the changes. You can have all of them queued up. You get to go. Let's do one more actually. I'm gonna copy this and paste it and I'm gonna say done just to show you that uh, if you set it to done, it's not gonna render it. So now we have four files queued up, but one of them's not gonna be rendered. So technically we're gonna have three of them rendered. So at this point, you just save it. You go over here, you, you know, you go to file and then uh, save as. And in here, you would navigate to a folder. I already have everything set up and I wanna do it as a CSV file. So you go over here, CSV file, save it. And yeah, I wanna 
override it. All right, we're good. So after you've done that, then you would go to After Effects and then you would navigate, you know, let's say you just opened it, you have a new project, right? So you just open it. Watch what happens when you run the script that I created for it. So you would go to NFL on air and page. When you click on it, it will automatically load the project and load this menu right here. So in here, you would load the uh, CSV file. Basically, the file would just export it out of, out of the uh, Excel. So you just load it up and you would navigate over to it. We're going to go to believe it's in here, documents, and there it is. So we're gonna open it up, boom, it's queued up, it's ready to go. Then we're gonna say, where do we want to render it? So we're gonna say load, let's render it to, I have this folder right here, press okay. And then you would say render settings, you would adjust what you want here, what kind of output module, basically which codec, you would have like your own codecs. So we're, do, we're gonna do something like this. You can create your own presets. It, it has to do based on what you already have installed on your computer. And then watch how easy it is. You just press render and it's gonna queue it up. It's gonna render one by one. It's gonna open it up, make all the changes from that CSV file. It's gonna render it. Now it does get hang, hung up here a bit, done. Then it's gonna go to the second one, do the same thing. And remember, we only have three, even though we had four, but three are only gonna be rendering. So we should have three different files. So that's on the third one right now. And let's see it, it should be done. So once it's done, it's gonna close the project. It's gonna, I mean, basically that's it. You don't, you don't have anything else open. So at that point, you would just find your project that you rendered it to. And in here we have them all queued up. So as you can see, we have a final report and we have all of them in here. So let's see week one, Let's see what it says. Tonight, it made all the changes we needed to. We can click on week two. It says tomorrow, it did all the changes. Week three, today makes everything you need to do. And then like watch this, if I go back to Excel and those were already rendered. So if I go over here and hit refresh, it's gonna tell me that it's all done. So you can queue them all up, you can refresh and see which ones are being done. So you can, if you're a project manager, this could be super helpful. And if you need to re-render something, you just set it to ready and then make all the changes and then do the same process again, export it as CSV and you're done. All right, well, that's the end of this video. That's how I was able to use just a simple Excel spreadsheet to speed up the workflow, speed up the time. And trust me, it's so much quicker than going into After Effects or doing it by hand. But if you have, if you take the time and set it up right, it can save you a lot of time. And again, it's just a spreadsheet. Everything is right there. And you don't even need to know how to use After Effects. So definitely something to think about. Well. Thank you for watching. My name is Sergey Proknevsky. And if you're not a part of our mentoring group on Facebook, you're missing out because it's an awesome group. It's totally free. You just join. It's a private group. And we have some heavyweights of this industry rubbing shoulders with everybody. And they're eager to either learn or teach someone something. So again, it's a group that was created to help people. So if you want to be helped, then you join. If you want to help somebody else, you join. Or if you want to do both, then you join as well. So definitely join by going to ukrami.com slash community. And if you want to support what we do here, uh, check out our tools, our courses at ukramedia.com. But until next time, my name is Sergey Proknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com.